please join us in praying for the sick and homebound. Father of goodness and love, hear our prayers for the sick members of our community and for all who are in need. Amid mental and physical suffering, may they find consolation in your healing presence. Show your mercy as you close wounds, cure illnesses, make broken bodies whole, and free downcast spirits. May these special people find lasting health and deliverance, and so join us in thanking you for all our gifts. We ask this through the Lord Jesus, who healed all who believed. Amen. The entrance antiphon. Come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we pray especially for this is Patrick and Mary O'Donnell, and this is James Arnold. At the beginning of this Holy Eucharist, let us ask our Almighty Father for His mercy, His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that I have, I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, what and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all, all the, the angels, angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, let the water teem with the abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day, God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. 
God made all kinds of wild animals and all kinds of cattle and all kinds of creeping things in the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeliness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image he created, male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you seed-bearing plants all over the earth, and every tree that seed bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give you all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all of their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the works that he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. Such is the story of the heavens and earth at their creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsial song. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Lord, o our Lord, God, our God, how, how wonderful, wonderful name in all, all the earth. earth. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him? or the son of man, that you should care for him. Lord, o Lord our, our God, God, how wonderful Lord, your name on all the earth. earth. You have made him little less than angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims in the path of the seas. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name on the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Incline my heart, O God, to your decrees, and favor me with your law. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition, he went on to say. How well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. In our Gospel today, the scribes and the Pharisees saw that disciples of Jesus did not observe the niceties of the tradition and code of the oral law regarding the washing of hands before and during meals, and they asked why. Jesus began by quoting to them a passage from Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. There Isaiah accused the people of his day of honoring God with their lips while their hearts were far away. In principle, Jesus accused the scribes and the Pharisees of two things. First, he accused them of hypocrisy. Anyone to whom religion is a legal thing, anyone to whom religion means carrying out certain external rules and regulations, anyone whom religion is entirely connected with the observation of a certain ritual and the keeping of a certain number of taboos is in the end bound to be, in the sense, a hypocrite. The reason is this, such people believe that they are good if they carry out the correct acts and practices, no matter where their hearts and their thoughts might be. To take the case of the legalistic Jew in the time of Jesus, he might hate those around him with all his heart. He might be full of envy and jealousy and concealed bitterness and pride that did not matter so long as he carried out the correct hand washing and observe the correct laws about cleanness and uncleanness. Legalism takes account of outward actions, but it takes no account of all of the people's inward feelings. They may well be meticulously serving God in outward things and bluntly disobeying God in inward things, and that is hypocrisy. There is no greater religious peril than that of identifying religion with outward observance. There is no more common religious mistake than to identify goodness with certain so-called religious acts. Church going, 
Bible reading, careful financial giving, even timetable prayer do not make us good. The fundamental question is how are our hearts towards God and towards others? And if our hearts, there are, there is, there are enmity and bitterness, grudges and pride, not all the outward religious observances in the world will make us anything other than hypocrites. The second accusation that Jesus implicitly leveled against these legalists was that they substituted the efforts of human ingenuity for the laws of God. For their guidance for the life, they did not depend on listening to God. They depended on listening to the clever arguments and debates, the fine spun niceties, the ingenious interpretation of the legal experts. Cleverness can never be the basis of a true religion. True religion can never only be the basis of human thought. It must always come not from their ingenious discoveries, but from the simple listening to and accepting the voice of God. In verses 8 to 13 of our gospel today, we heard the word korban used. The word means gift. It was used to describe something which was specifically dedicated to God. A thing which was korban was as if it had already been laid upon the altar. That is to say, it was completely set apart from all ordinary purposes and usages and became the property of God. If a man wished to dedicate some of his money or his property to God, he declared it korban, and therefore, it would never be used for any ordinary or secular purpose. Unfortunately, this practice was often abused. There came a time when Corban became a much more generalized oath. If a man said, Corban that by which you might be profited by me, and in so doing, he bound himself never to help or to benefit the person so addressed by anything that belonged to himself. If that is the use here, the passage means that at some time, perhaps in a fit of anger or rebellion, a man said to his parents, Korban, anything by which you may ever be helped by me, even if he repented from his rash vow, the scribal legalist declared that it was unbreakable and that he might never again render his parents any assistance. There were indeed cases in which the strict performance of the scribal law made it impossible to carry out the law of the Ten Commandments. In this case, honor thy mother and thy father. Jesus was attacking a system which put rules and regulations before the claim of human need. The commandment of God was that the claim of human love should come first. The commandment of the scribes was that the claim of legal rules and regulations should come first. Jesus was quite sure that any regulations which prevented anyone from giving help where help was needed was nothing less than a contradiction of the law of God. We must take care that we never allow rules to paralyze the claims of love. Nothing that prevents one from our helping one another can ever be a rule that was approved by God. Amen. Together, as one voice, let us lift our prayers to our, our loving and merciful God. For members of the church throughout the world, may the love of Christ unite our hearts to God in our lives of faith, we pray to the Lord. For our elected officials, May God strengthen them in justice and integrity. We pray to the Lord. For the homebound and the lonely, may the love of Jesus console and comfort them 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God's declaration of the goodness of creation guide our relationship with the earth and its resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick in our community, for Father Dominic's mother and father, for all our friends that are, that are sick at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to this pandemic, and for all infected by COVID-19, that God will ease their suffering and return them to health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the Lord welcome them into his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and intentions that we placed in our prayer book, and for all the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers this day and ask for your gracious mercy in granting them. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Father, spirit and contrary heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, may our sacrifice in sight this day be pleasant to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of life, of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life, for your for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom, through Christ our Lord, and so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, o, holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered, here, gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, O Lord, confirm us in unit, unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
at the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory are, yours. are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus Christ, with your love to us, you receive it. Amen. Receive it, loving God and Father, Jesus Christ, and give the church my God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the blood and blood of Christ give us for eternal life. Communion Antiphon, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be consoled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. After the final blessing, we will have the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So, of course, I invite you to stay at least for a few minutes in the front of, of Jesus as we had this beautiful quote at the beginning of St. Therese, right? He's here for us. Uh, and one announcement. Today, uh, we do not have confessions. Uh, I, I am not available today. Uh, I have a meeting. Father Dominic is away. So, um, so sorry for that. But we'll, if someone would like to, so can call and make an appointment uh, or just wait to Saturday, okay? Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail, God, guardian of the Redeemer, Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed, blessed Virgin, Virgin Mary. Mary. To you, God, entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. O salutaris hostia, Felipanis hostium, Vela premun hostilia, Amen. Yeah.